Six months ago, I had a life-altering injury. I was caught in an avalanche while backcountry snowboarding in Japan. The day of my accident started like many other in my life. Full stoke, going out to shred some pile. We had paid attention on the way up and didn't notice much avalanche activity. It was windy, but there wasn't much fresh snow. We were thinking it was full on go time, just ready to charge. I looked up and I saw my friend cresting the horizon, moving right into the gully right above me. And uh, with the second turn that they made, the whole gully cracked ear to ear. It immediately got on my board and just started pushing me down, knocking me straight onto my butt. Next thing you know, I was sliding right into the center of the gully, right into the river of snow. Being familiar with the terrain and knowing avalanche terrain and what to look for is really key because a small amount of snow that knocks you off your feet and starts pushing you down into a gully can turn into a lot of snow and, and easily bury you. A gully is typically known as a terrain trap, and so um, skiing into gullies in the backcountry is, generally speaking, not a good idea. The other type of terrain trap I can think of are benches. Any place where snow can start to, to build up and then slow down, and if you're caught, bury you, like in a gully or on a bench, is uh, the type of terrain trap that people should be aware of. The way that uh, avalanche moves down a slope it has a lot of these compression points. So as soon as I hit an undulation in the gully, the snow would all compress on me. I would get folded in half and basically feel like my upper body was getting smashed into my knees and I would get whiplashed back. On one of those occasions, my right binding on my split board blew off my board and that left my snowboard only attached to my left foot. Next hit, snowboard basically levered me open ended up pulling apart my pelvis in a couple spots, dislocating my shoulder and tearing up my knee. Granted, we had seen a lot of slides in Japan in the previous days and, uh, you know, it definitely should have been on my mind more. When I made that move into the gully, I didn't think about the avalanche potential, but reality was when I made that move, I put myself in the danger zone and then I parked myself there. One of the most overlooked things and something which is taught or should be taught in the avalanche classes is what we call the human factor. And that is that there are dynamics that are set up in groups um, which are not really relevant to what's going on in the snowpack or what's going on on that day. Being familiar with the backcountry that you're traveling in or skiing in or riding in is a double-edged sword. It's easy to get caught in a uh, mode where you've been there before, you've skied it before, you've seen it before, you've done it successfully, and that familiarity can lead you to take things for granted based on past experience. In the past five months of my recovery, I've had a lot of time to think about the decisions I made leading up to the accident. The reality was, Losing communication with my partners wasn't the only mistakes I made. The move I made into the gully, exposing myself to the train above me, was probably my worst mistake. That wasn't the only one. I also hadn't told people where I was going to be, or even communicated with them that maybe we shouldn't roll into this gully because it could slide. I had taken all those things for granted with one just rush move. I was trying to get out of the wind, wanted to shred. I didn't think it was dangerous. This was one occasion when a simple brain fart nearly killed me.